every time that you think we've discovered all the major species on the planet, some other creature sort of walks out of the forest, <laughs> crawls out of the forest, or gets fished up out of the ocean in some net, and we realize the world is stranger than we thought it was, and our taxonomic classification is not finished yet. And to that confusion and anxiety and ambivalence, uh, the great taxidermist, um, Charles Waterton, lent his handy um, skills to fool and confuse sort of the uptight squares um, in natural history science during the 19th century. So he basically left England and lived in South America, traveling all around, writing about the stuff he was discovering. He, f he basically described anacondas for the first time to the West, uh, giant caiman. Um, he actually described the sloth. And when he said it lives sort of hanging upside down, you know, from its toes, he was openly mocked. And um, they basically treated him like a fool back in England. Um, he got his revenge, however, and so today's episode of Monsterology is uh, a discussion of Charles Waterton's hilarious and monstrous <laughs> taxidermy hoaxes. So join me. Okay, here's the first drawing. This is a charcoal drawing, portrait of the man himself. And then uh, you're going to see how we do this. This is a uh, digital drawing of one of his taxidermy hoaxes called the Nondescript. Uh, this is his version of Martin Luther. Uh, we're going to find that he was a Catholic and he was critical of Protestantism. And then this is a drawing of the, that I did of the sloth that he described for the scientific community. Um, you're going to see here I'm, I'm laying in a pencil sketch. This is based on a wonderful uh, portrait of Waterton that was done by um, Charles Wilson Peel. And many of you know Charles Wilson Peel. He was a great a painter and a museum collector. He basically created one of the first American museums and uh, he was co contemporary with uh, and friends with uh, Benjamin Franklin, for example, other founding fathers. He was a master taxidermist himself and he did this drawing or this painting of uh, Waterton as an homage. I just love this. Uh, <laughs> it's a really kind of a hilarious uh, image because he's sitting there with the typical gravitas that one would expect but then he's got a taxidermy bird and then just this weird little cat head which has been taxidermied and stuck on a mount mounted on a placard of some kind and in the original uh, painting and here I'm recreating it <laughs> the cat just has these kind of crossed eyes it just looks like a bad piece of taxidermy art but incredibly, um, I don't know, endearing in that way. Uh, so I'm, I'm using charcoal here in a blending stump, sort of traditional charcoal drawing. Uh, but then the rest of the artwork I'm going to be doing for this is all on the iPad using the Apple Pencil. I thought you guys might be interested to see sort of those drawings un unfold in that uh, digital medium. Let me tell you a little bit about Waterton. He's uh, born in 1782 and he dies in 1865. Uh, he had a huge influence um, even on Charles Darwin because his uh, the sort of descriptions of his time in South America, uh, Darwin had read those and was very inspired by those. Uh, Waterton was born into an upper-class British family in Yorkshire, uh, one that proudly traced its family tree back to Sir Thomas More, but Charles preferred the life of the explorer to that of the Yorkshire gentleman. And, um, he went to South America in 1812, in 1816, again in 1820 and 24. And there he recorded an enormous amount of information in places like Guyana and Brazil. Uh, he was friends with Sir Joseph Banks, who was the president of the Royal Society. And this put him sort of in connection with the larger natural history community. Um, what you're seeing me draw here is a crazy, um, taxidermy that he brought back with him and he called this the nondescript. In fact, he, he called anything like this that was weird and didn't fit in the nondescript. And um, here I'm, I'm switching over now to drawing uh, Martin Luther. This is uh, Waterton's uh, sort of insulting portrayal of Martin Luther as the devil himself. And this was done, 
using monk, sort of ape uh, monkey parts and other creatures. And Waterton just pasted this stuff together. He was a master uh, taxidermist. Um, with regard to the nondescript, uh, Waterton describes this uh, acquisition in his, uh, in his book, quote, I also procured an animal which has caused not a little speculation and astonishment. In my opinion, his thick coat of hair and great length of tail uh, but his, put his species out of all question. But then his face and head caused the inspector to pause for a moment before he ventures to pronounce his opinion of the classification. He was a large animal, and as I was pressed for daylight and moreover felt no inclination to have the whole weight of his body upon my back, I contented myself with his head and shoulders, which I have cut off, uh, and I have brought them with me to Europe." End quote. So he claims that he found this creature, sort of like a Bigfoot creature, and he's only able to bring back the head. And this was, he would do this stuff all the time, various creatures. And people were, um, even scientists, were completely stymied and couldn't figure out if he was, if these were real animals or whether he was hoaxing them. Uh, they accused him of hoaxing, but he said, oh, if anybody was this skilled at taxidermy, then it, you know, it would be hopeless. We'd never know what was real and what wasn't. Uh, but actually, he was <laughs> he was hoaxing them. He had built the convincing nondescript bust um, by using the head and shoulders of a red howler monkey. And using this his own sort of novel technique, he shaved the flesh from the back of an animal's face until he had created a thin layer of skin that he could manipulate into all manner of creature. In addition, he found that two skins similarly prepared could be molded together when wet to create the illusion of a hybrid animal. Uh, he was a taxidermy genius, and he used his skill to prank his stuffy professional peers and the gullible lay audience. So convincing was his humanoid grotesque that some observers complained that Waterton should not be allowed to kill natives in order to demonstrate his taxidermy skills. But an early reviewer called him out on his mischievous monster, claiming that the nondescript looked suspiciously like a well-known master in chancery from the House of Commons. Quote, it is foolish, the reviewer said, to trifle with science and natural history. And this was the kind of stuff that Waterton really enjoyed doing. He, he mixed real science together with these hoaxes. And I guess he just didn't, uh, he didn't worry too much or care. He was such an outsider. He also seems to have had um, such quirks of character that some people have suggested that he may have been on the autism spec uh, spectrum or, or possibly even had some kind of uh, borderline personality. He would, he, he was fascinated with vampire bats, for example, in South America. He would constantly expose himself uh, to, to being, uh, he always wanted the vampire bats to drink his blood. <laughs> He himself believed that bleeding was healthy, so he uh, oftentimes uh, let his own blood cut himself. I think there were like 170 cuts on his body and he would show people that came over for dinner. Um, I think he even drank his own blood and he, he oftentimes acted like the animals that he loved and studied. He would climb trees uh, well into old age and read Latin poetry. His uh, Catholicism was pretty devout, and he was hostile to the sort of um, cold and clinical um, Protestantism that he saw all around him in England. So he was a fascinating character. I love the, the way that his work is uh, sort of right on the borderline between, you know, real science and trickery and art. And um, also, I just sort of love his uh, the creatures that he's made. One of them is called the Noctifer, and uh, that's also a great uh, taxidermy mount. If you look it up, you'll see some wonderful images of it. All right, here I'm just closing in on this the end of this uh, digital drawing of the sloth. I used some of the painting uh, brushes in, in the iPad um, app called Procreate. And I built it up slowly, just like a painting. I think you could see from the beginning. And here I'm just adding the refining details. Just at the very end, you want to add the lightest of the lights and the darkest of the darks. All right, that's the story of uh, Charles Waterton and his crazy taxidermy. I hope you enjoyed it. Please come on back for more Monsterology. Hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.